Greetings, Science Maximites. Today we're using fizzy drinks in our experiments. And a fizzy drink is just water with bubbles of carbon dioxide gas dissolved in it. So I thought since we exhale carbon dioxide, I could make a fizzy drink by just blowing bubbles in this water. Doesn't seem to be working though, does it? I don't see any bubbles, do you? No. Hmm. Water does absorb carbon dioxide gas, but I don't have a fizzy drink. Weird. Time to check the book of science. Oh, in order to make bubbles, you have to have pressure. So... This is an air compressor. It takes air and compresses it, puts it under pressure. So... Hmm. The container needs to be pressurized. Okay. When you get a container of a fizzy drink, the carbon dioxide gas is put in there under pressure, and it stays in there under pressure until you release it. That's the sound of the pressure being released. And when it is released, the carbon dioxide gas starts to expand. And when it expands, it creates bubbles. And that's what makes your fizzy drink. This process takes a while to run out, but eventually it will become flat. No more bubbles. But what if there was a way to release all of that carbonation all in one go? Well, there is. And for this experiment, all you need is your favorite brand of fizzy drink. Science Max brand, Diet Science Cola. 100% science, zero calories. And your favorite candy, like these science experiments. All the minty flavor that comes from pure science. So, all you need to do is open this up. Open this up. Take one of these and put it in here with an adult's permission because it can get kind of messy. Whoa! What's going on here is all of the carbonation that was in the bottle is now being released much more rapidly than it would have been before. Now, why does this happen? Well, if you look at a carbonated beverage, you'll see that the bubbles don't come from everywhere. They come from the inside of the glass, or in this case, a lot are coming from the straw. And that's because the carbon dioxide bubbles like to find a little imperfection, something to hold on to in order to expand and bubble out. And a candy such as this has a ton of little tiny microscopic imperfections. So when you drop it in, there's a lot more places for the bubbles to attach, and that makes the carbonation happen a lot quicker. But remember, this is not a chemical reaction. It all has to do with carbonation. <laughs> Good luck if you catch them. So high fives on that. Yep. That worked spectacularly. That was awesome. So we've done this. Let's now, go bigger. Let's go bigger. bigger. Oh, okay. Definitely. So let's go and we'll clean All this right. up afterwards. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Okay, let it go. Whoa. 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 This is a balloon, and this is an orange. When you put them together, a chemical reaction happens. Ah, how'd you go in there for a minute, didn't I? Hit? No? No? All right. Well, you can actually do a chemical reaction between a balloon and an orange. You see, balloons are made of latex, which is a kind of polymer that's very, very stretchy. And orange peels contain a chemical called limonene. Limonene breaks down latex. <laughs> so, we have three questions. The first is, why does this happen? Well, like I said, it's all chemistry. You see, balloons are made of polymers, chains of molecules held together by chemical bonds. A limonene molecule attacks those bonds. Om nom nom nom, om nom nom, om nom nom nom, om nom nom, delicious. And breaks it, that separates the polymers, and that pops the balloon. But remember, it only works with natural latex. So make sure you're using natural latex balloons. Second question, why do they call it limonene when it's in orange peels? I mean, yes, it's in lime peels and lemon peels, but the chemical itself 
Smells like oranges. They should call it orangeine or, or citrus fruitinide or... Anyway, third question, should we max it out? Of course we should, come on. 200 balloons versus two bottles of limonene. Ready, go. Just plastics, rayon, nylon, Teflon, you name the lawn, we got it on. Sail. What, what do we, we want? want? Polymers. When, when do we, we want, want them? them? Anytime during normal business hours. Wool, silk, even cotton. Polymers, polymers, polymers. Polymers, polymers, polymers. Word has lost all meaning. Glue, paint, umbrella fabric, oh yeah. Carpet, you bet that's on sale. Roberta, I'm running out of sale signs. Buy it and I'll put it in a plastic bag, also made of polymers. Seriously, Roberta, we can't have a sale on everything. Oh, hey, hey, even you, even me, the proteins in our bodies, even our DNA, all polymers. <laughs> so come on down to South Science Shop and get a great deal on your polymers for a limited time. I mean, it'd have to be a limited time, right, Roberta? Because, I mean, I can't discount everything in the store to 75% off. How am I going to make any money? I mean, are we still rolling? One hundred different kinds of slime. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun, but we're not gonna make a hundred today. Yeah, I know. We're just gonna do our top favorites. Yeah, it's gonna be super great. All right, what are we starting with? So our first slime we're starting with today is some really cool molding slime. Now this slime, actually, if you leave it out overnight, it'll harden, and you can make an imprint of whatever you like. So here we made an imprint of our little uh, tool there. So we're gonna look at a little bit more liquidy slime, starting with this one over here, which I believe you already know about. This is cornstarch mud. Exactly. You hold this. Sounds good. I'm gonna good. hold this and we're gonna try pouring it. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. so. See, it's like, it's like a liquid, but then you do it fast, it's like a solid. All right, what's next? Over here, we have some other really awesome types of slime. So right over here, we have some crunchy slime. Crunchy slime? Exactly. Why is it crunchy? Now, it's crunchy because we've actually added a few beads inside of it to make it crunchy. Uh -huh. so this is some really cool, awesome slime. Here, you take half. And you can feel the beads as you get to stretch it out. It's so cool. This is uh, this one is a little harder to clean. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll just do that. All right, so what's next? So next we have some really cool glow-in-the-dark slime. Glow-in-the-dark slime? Yeah, it's so awesome. Ooh, look at how much it glows. That glows a lot. That's super glowy slime. So to do the different kinds of slime, we need the polymer. Yes. And then the thing that sticks the polymers together. Exactly. So the glue is the polymer. Glue is the polymer. And the starch is the thing that bonds it. Yes. Uh-huh. Very cool. And then you put the thing in that makes it the, the kind of slime. Yes, right before you add the bonding component, because if we keep uh, adding stuff after it's already made, it unfortunately won't be able to take it. So we add our powder before we add our starch in this situation. Uh, should we go <laughs> on to the next thing? Yeah, let's move on to the More slime! slime. Being a chef is my absolute passion, and cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Strange. The spoon is no sharper than it was before. <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker, and today we're cooking with coal. Today we're going to learn how to make a drink cool. Look at this bottle of lemonade. It's warm right now and not very refreshing. So what's the best way to cool this down? We put it in ice, right? But did you know there's an even better recipe than ice? You can make ice colder. It's true. All you need to do is add salt. I've got a second bowl of ice and a second jug of lemonade, and I've got two digital thermometers. What I'm going to do is add salt to this bowl. 
What the salt does is starts to melt the ice, and that actually consumes heat. This is called an endothermic reaction, and it absorbs heat, which makes the ice colder. And as you can see, this bowl of ice still sitting at around zero degrees Celsius, but this bowl, minus eight and falling. Wow. So there you have it, making something even colder than ice would normally make it. That is a way to make a refreshing glass of lemonade. I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on Cooking with Science. Oh.